What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the first part of my model building on a shoestring budget series. This series will cover how to get into the model building hobby without spending a ton of money. Um, this first part is going to cover the essential tools you're going to need for model building. Um, then the other series will cover paint and getting models on a budget and how to source your kits. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show is you're going to need a good pair of cutters to get your parts free away from the tree. So here's the cutters that I use to build all my models that you've seen on the channel. And if you don't have these or can't find them or and technically you don't really need them, um, if you have some wire cutters that are small enough to get in there, behind the sprues, um, something with a nice flat back um, will work well. Um, so something like these small wire cutters will do the trick. There's also these thicker ones. They will work, um, but again, they're a little thick on the back. So um, they're gonna be a little hard. So obviously there's a size difference. So something that's closer into this size of things will be great to use um, for cutting your parts off the styrene sprues. Um, another thing you're gonna need is a pair of scissors um, to cut your decals and to also cut your um, model bags open. You can also just tear them open, but mainly decals. So here's some just scissors. And then there's these thin ones. These are like hair cutting scissors. Um, these are just the goodie brand. So you can see I've had them out painted around them before, but these nice thin scissors are good for getting in between the bigger decals and cutting those smaller ones out. So um, once you cut your parts off the tree, you might have flashing and things like that. So a nice emery board will be nice to get the flashing off your parts before you paint them so they're nice and clean and ready to go. So if you have one like this, you maybe have lying around in your closet this one has different variants of grit. Um, so does this one polish, shape, and smooth. And it also has a buff, which you don't, it's not gonna do anything for the plastic, but the smooth and the shape will. You can also get the bigger boards. Um, here's like a piece of a bigger emery board but I've shown these little ones before in my videos. You guys seen me use them, get the flashing off of the parts. Um, so I got these at the Dollar General. So you guys can Dollar General or Dollar Tree or Family Dollar, anything like that. Get your emery boards. So you can also get some 600 grit sandpaper. This is nice and fine and won't um, add deep gouges into your um, body or anything like that. Um, so I just cut some little pieces off like so. Um, it's a great grit for uh, wet sanding. If you ever need to wet sand anything on a model as well. Another thing you're gonna need is tweezers. So these are tweezers that are ceramic tipped. Um, I use these ones for applying my decals. And then these ones with the needle nose, I use for gluing things into the narrow places that are kind of hard to get to with my fingers. Um, these work pretty good. So you guys might already have these, maybe in an old first aid kit. Um, maybe you have an abundance of these. Um, but if not, you guys can get these at like Walmart, um, 
maybe even the dollar store. I know back then they used to have a whole bunch of different assorted um, kind of tweezers at the Dollar Tree. I don't know if they still have that set or not, but it's a good place to check. Um, you might need a saw, um, not 100%, unless you're gonna be cutting things off. I use this saw um, for cutting die cast and things like that. Um, it's just a Walmart Hyper Tough brand, but I've used it to cut off the fenders of a 32 Ford uh, model in the past. Um, so if you don't like fenders on your 32 Ford and you want to give it more of that hot rod slash rat rod kind of look, um, again, this isn't an essential tool, but if you want to make your build a little bit more custom. Um, so instead of X-Acto knives, if you guys don't have an X-Acto knife or a hobby knife, um, you guys can just use a box cutter. Um, these come in handy for when you're cutting the hoods open to have like blowers and sometimes to put a blower motor on with like a hood scoop you got to cut the hole in the hood first so it fits and then you put your hood scoop on so these are great for that another thing you might need is some sort of clips um, so these are just binder clips I've used these in the past to glue two-piece headers together um, Clothes pins will probably be your best bet as these bigger ones are pretty strong and they might dent your styrene and uh, they could even break it. But these little ones, they seem to be um, pretty gentle, but obviously clothes pins will probably be a little bit better and safer. Um, but if you have some of these laying around. Another thing is something to hold parts while you paint it. Um, so again, I've had these since I was doing die cast already. Um, so these will work. These are called helping hands. Um, a lot of times they're used to hold things for soldering and things like that and wiring. Um, they do have a magnifying glass on them. So if you want to keep that, you can. I just always take them off as I don't really need any magnification. I just use them to paint. Um, but before I got those, I used to just use these blocks of wood with little holes drilled into them with alligator clips. So here's, you know, one where it had two alligator clips and one and one. And obviously you can see the paint on them. So I use these and I still use them because um, you always need places, uh, things to hold your parts. Another thing is these, just alligator clips on some dowels. So you can um, put them in the lid of a water bottle, styrofoam, cardboard box, things like that. And just another way to paint stuff. So for painting your body um, of your car, this is what I used before. Um, it's just a tape roll with a paint stick. So if you've done any painting at your house, you might have some paint sticks. And uh, I would just, obviously, you see I just taped it to the roll. I would take some other masking tape and just double it over. So both sides are sticky and I would stick one side to the stick and stick the other side to the body. Um, it did have a chance of falling off, um, but it does work. Uh, if you want a sure way to paint without worrying about it falling off 100%, um, it's just a paint can with some aluminum foil on it. So just some dupa color, high performance wheel coating, just some clear coat for your wheels. Um, just take some aluminum foil and put it over the top and then you can slide your body over that. Um, as you see, I've done it and it works, but I will recommend, you know, the Tamiya uh, painting stand set. That's a Sprayworks painting stand set um, from Tamiya. 
got this from Hobby Lobby. It was $20.99. Um, you can get these off Amazon for the same price. And it comes with a paint stand that holds your body and a stand that is a Lazy Susan. Um, and it has clips. So I'll go ahead and show you that. So it's just a two piece stand with a Lazy Susan style bottom. And again, this actually comes with clips. So again, two piece headers, um, you can, you know, hold them, glue them, and then take them out and paint them. So this is a pretty good investment. If you get in a model building, like I said, 20 bucks. Here's the one that holds your body. So it goes over and then it has different um, spots to have different tensions and things like that. And again, this is also on a Lazy Susan style bottom and it is two piece. So there's some things you can get to hold your parts and also hold your body and things you might already have laying around the house. Another tool you're gonna need for model building is paint brushes. So these are just some cheap ones. Not sure what brand they are. Um, so it seems the logo is like a hand, um, but just, you know, cheap brushes from Walmart. Um, I like these ones because they have the different sizes on the handles. So three round, like a 10-0 spotter brush, a five round, another 10-0. Bought these brushes two times. Obviously I like these spotter brushes. They're nice for painting carbs and things like that. So, um, so for some detail paint work, You can get some micro brushes. Um, these are just testers brand. But if you don't wanna buy these, um, I don't know how much these were, but my son uses those. But you can use just a toothpick, good for painting, as well as Q-tips. They're also good for painting. Um, or you can use them to apply glue. Um, so if you guys get like deli thin lunch meat in these containers, I recommend maybe keeping a few of them. Um, so you can put glue on top of here and uh, dip your toothpick in there and get a precise or also the Q-tips. And again, you can also use it for uh, if you want to paint you can get some paint lined out. That way you can do like tail lights, headlights, um, things like that, and have a paint palette. Another thing that these are good for is storage containers. So here's one with a bunch of parts. Got surfboards in there, um, ambulance lights, different um, hood pieces and moon tanks and things like that from extra parts from um, models that I've built. So definitely, you know, hold on to these. So it's just a good storage thing. And then at the end of the day, you can always throw it away um, um, in place of a cutting mat. So I've got the cutting mat here. And also recently I just did a new video um, last week where I showed a new um, silicone mat that I got from Hobby Lobby, did a review on. Um, in place of that, you can just use some cardboard or if you have a plastic cutting board from like the dollar store, um, you can get one of those. Or even if you have an old plastic cutting board, you can use that. Um, obviously, just only use it for that and not food again. But cardboard is good for, um, you know, putting things on to paint and also cut. So as you see, there's some paint on this. So...
and then you know you have if you want to do like chrome trim you can use some silver metallic sharpies if you don't want to do like bare metal foil i don't even get into that stuff but obviously that's an option but you can also just either paint it on or use sharpies um there is some paint markers that i use occasionally um obviously i don't have any well, i do have one chrome one right here but it's not really like a fine tip one or anything um, but there is the uh, chrome pins out there that will work um, but also black is a nice one for you know you can color your belts and things like that um, and again, you guys see my builds, you guys know that sometimes I color my taillights and headlights and things like that with Sharpie marker. Um, the last thing is going to be glue. You're going to need some sort of glue. Um, so whether that's, you know, as you guys know, I use testers and the tube. I usually get these two packs. They're $4.99. I think a single tube is maybe $3 or something like that two something almost three dollars so i just get the two pack i recently got this for uh my son to try he wanted something with maybe a little bit more control so it has this like needle tip on it that's a little bit more money 7.99 um, but if it gets clogged it does have the unclogging needle tool to use you guys can use um whatever glue you guys want if you guys want to use like tamiya extra thin um, i've never used it so i can't really um, judge on it um if you want to get into this hobby the most essential tools i think you are going to need are going to be um some glue you know a good pair of cutters to get your parts off the tree some tweezers maybe a blade if you want to like depends on what model kit you buy but the most essential ones i think you're going to need are going to be right here good pair of cutters some glue and your tweezers and like a, maybe some uh, binder clips or clothespins to depend on if you have like two-piece headers are good to have and some emery boards. So I, I'm gonna say these are the most essential tools you need to get into the hobby of model building. Um, you wanna be able to clean your flashing off to have a nice looking model when you paint it. You wanna be able to have something to hold your parts while you are gluing them. You wanna be able to apply your decals nicely. You wanna be able to glue your parts into place. Uh, also applies for the glue. So you wanna be able to and you want to be able to cut them away. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I will leave some Amazon affiliate links in the description. Um, I do get a little bit of kickback from that purchase if you use the link to purchase anything. Um, but I will have some model building um, toolkits and things like that linked. Um, and some different types of holders. One of them will be the Tamiya one. Like I said, it's the same price, $20. And it has the one for holding your body. It comes with the clips and the other base to also put your other parts down onto to paint them. Um, that has been one of the most um, helpful tools that I've got. So I will say that one is also an essential tool. Um, so definitely stay tuned for part two. That one is going to be the model kit sourcing video and how to get them for good deals. And um, I will be giving away some some secrets um and some secret places for how to get some maybe even some vintage kits for a good deal um so definitely stay tuned for that video thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel if you haven't already hit that subscribe button it definitely helps the channel and i'll see you guys on the next one see ya this show is brought to you by the family Thank you.
like and subscribe.